Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hit or Die podcast with your host Jake Saldati and Chad Rothford. Special guest here, you guys all know him, Marcus Walden. A regular. Yeah, thank He's a regular. It's been a minute. It has been a while. Um, you are a regular for us, like Labby. Um, please subscribe to the podcast if you're watching here on YouTube. Also go check it out, Spotify, iTunes, download, uh, maybe leave a comment, rating, something like that. Uh, we appreciate everybody's support. Uh, and also on social media, follow us at uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Hit or Die Podcast. It's also on TikTok. I forget sometimes it's on TikTok. Um, so follow us there as well. Uh, regular, like I said. Like Labby. What, what's like up with Labby. Labby. What's up with Labby? Labby Gates is official a thing. I've been, it's been a few weeks since we've recorded. So uh, not for that reason. Uh, Chad was not feeling well. Then kids were sick and home. So we just couldn't time it up. I think same, same, it, same here. here. So yeah, we've been we've been trying to set this up for a couple of weeks for those who've been wondering where we've been. That's kind of what's going on. Uh, but we did pull, not pull. They're not deleted. Let let me be clear. I will never delete the episodes. Uh, I'm just waiting for the okay. They're they're on private mode right now. Um, Labby was on, and apparently, some people, I'm not sure who, weren't too thrilled with all the things he had to say. This is just what I've heard. Uh, and because Labby is a friend, like a close friend, before he is a guest on this show, uh, I care about that more than I care about the podcast. Uh, I We just kind of talked. It was better for us to just put him on private for now. Let it blow over. Let some of the softies and the crying stop. And then we can, you know, because everybody wants to listen to him again. That's the funny thing. Mm-hmm. It's like I have somebody who was like, I'm trying to listen to it again. Or I wanted to send it to somebody uh, just for now, just for Labby's sake. Uh, I felt the best. Maybe this is the route to take. Labby might be taking a, a little break from hit or die as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's got he's got his scouting job to do and he's got things to do as well. And his personal yeah, life. But this is but like all, you're also not allowed to have an opinion on things. No, evidently not. No, no. Like on where the game's going. Like, uh, as far as the, the things we talked about or people discussed, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Like, it's fine. If you don't like it, don't There's listen. no names involved. So no, but I'm just saying, is, if you have a problem you know with it, it then don't listen to it. Don't download it and don't watch and don't listen to us. I've said it a million times. You don't have to. We don't make you. We're not. There's no gun to your head that says you have to listen. If you like what we do, fucking A. I love it. Thank you. And there is some hardcore people that listen to everything. Always. And uh, they're probably on the side of we're on with why it's down and probably not happy that it's down. But again, Labby is a very close friend to both of us. And, uh, I, you know, I respect that and it was just easier in the moment. So, Uh, and we'll keep it that way. I'm sure we'll, we'll see how it rolls. Uh, but again, that's kind of the world we live in. You can't, you can't say anything anymore. You can't have opinion about, sir. If, if the people above you don't agree with what you have to say, it's now a problem. That's right. Uh, not that anything was honestly, in my opinion, said that was bad. Uh, you know, in fact, right out the gate, if you listen to that episode, he said, well, you can't right now. No, you can't right now. <laughs> but if you did right out the gate, he, he mentions like, I just have a, I have a firm belief in certain things and that's just my nature. That's my personality. Yeah. That's, and, and you got to think he, he, when he played, it was a different ball game. And that was 22, 24 years ago is when he was in the big leagues. I mean, he played in the big leagues here. And that's where that's it was definitely a different ball game then. It was even a different ball game when I walked in in 2007 into the minor leagues, and having those guys around me when I was younger, it's a different ball game than what it is now. I remember you know growing up in the in the A ball in 2007, eight, and nine. There were certain things that you did. I mean, we wore there was no shorts. You wore collared shirts. You didn't get caught with flip flops around. It was all a twenty five to fifty dollar fine, even in short season A ball. As in now, we show up in sweatpants and flip-flops and white beaters, and you're like... Wearing we're, Crocs. Yeah, and, wearing Crocs to the field, and it's it's definitely a different... A they different relaxed. Att- yes, uh, really relaxed, and and it, which I understand. I like it. I mean, I got some nice sweats that look good, and but also I like the professionalism of wearing a collared shirt. Um, I remember I got I got rained by Rick Porcello one day. I showed up to the ballpark. I had some nice, like decent-looking slacks on with a like a golf polo is what you would consider it. And he reamed me because it looked like I came from the golf course. What, what are you doing? Are you playing golf? And I was like, what? what, it, what? I mean, it's a color. Was shirt. it the Cy Young year? No, it was, it was right after. Right that after. was 2019. I, it was in Baltimore. 
which we didn't play golf in Baltimore. I'm riding a scooter to the field, but I'll never forget that. Like, he's like, you never be the least dressed person. If you're the most dressed up person, that's okay. He's like, but you'll never be the, the, the lowest dressed person in the, in the building. And so, I mean, honestly, from that day on, I wore button up t-shirts and you kind of follow the, the guy that, that has done it for a long time. And that was, that's just a small part of the old veteran mentality, the old school baseball mentality that Rick brought to me. Um, obviously I love Rick. That was one of my, my prized possessions is having one of his jerseys signed and with messages on it and something I got to get framed. Yeah, that is pretty sweet. But just like that old school thought, that, that old school. It's not it even that old school game. though. Like you just I mean, said it, you're yeah. a professional. Oh yeah. It's, like, it's the way you go about your business is, is a way, you know, you're not demanding respect. It's more of like how you present yourself is the way you're going to get, get treated. And that was one of the things that Rick brought to me. And as a, as a youngster in the, in the big leagues, I was still 30, 31 years old. I was actually six months older than Rick, but he had, <laughs> yeah, he that, had been in the big leagues for eight, nine, you, 10 yeah. years and also a Cy Young winner. Yeah. You definitely listen to that guy. Yeah. So, I mean, with the labby stuff, we'll see. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I can't, uh, you know, whatever. We'll, yeah, we'll leave it there. Um, other stuff going around. I mean, high school baseball started. Juco baseball has been going for a couple of weeks. The Dogs uh, had their first homestand last weekend against uh, Nebraska of Ohio and went 3-1. Omaha. And one. Omaha, sorry. Ohio. Jesus. <clears throat> uh, Omaha, they went 3-1. and one, uh, Had a chance at a sweep. I know Ovi was a little frustrated uh, losing that last game. And listening to his interview post game, like he nailed it. Like championship clubs find a way to close out a series. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing I took away from him saying in that, that conference was like, you know, that's and that's freaking week your first series. Yeah. And that's the mindset. So and at home too. Like that's if that's the mentality we're pre and I guess most coaches are of that same mindset. But for right out the gate to to not be satisfied with three and one and winning a series just tells me the expectations high and I love it. That's this the standard we want and hopefully the dogs can keep going. They won the, their midweek game last night uh, against uh USF. Uh what was that seven five final seven, five. there? So they're five and three. Uh, they go on the road this weekend, uh, March 1st of the week, uh, second, third is a series starting at mm -hmm. San Jose State, and then back at home against UOP Tuesday, and next weekend, uh, they host, I believe it's Nevada. So for, and I don't know what the weather is going to be like, so pay attention to the, the updates on Twitter, Instagram, go to GoBulldogs.com for the info uh, regarding Fresno State, and like I said, high school JUCO has started, um, I would ask Chad what I've been asked. I had somebody ask me the other day uh, in our area for high school baseball, who's who's the team to beat this year? Who's the t and I was like, I have no idea. I there's, don't know. Again, there's some good teams on the And I've side. I've I've watched a couple games. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say that I don't know. Typically in years past, there's one or two teams that kind of just mop up. They're mm -hmm. dominant. Buchanan's typically won. Last year Stockdale was the dominant team in the section. And like Bakersfield doesn't get like people all that's Bakersfield. Well, yeah, they're start our section, yeah, and you got dominated by them. Like and they're going to be good again this year. Exactly. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go try to go out Central or Redwood tomorrow. I'm gonna try to go down to Vice Redwood's Australia. good. They got Red a Iron good. Redwood. They got a pitcher that's going to be probably more in than a one top got, round. Yeah, they got a couple couple guys that are going to have some good arms. Um, I believe Warren's throwing for Central, um, so I think it'll be a good pitching duel. So we'll see. I, I kind of want to get down there and watch that game. Um, Frontier has been hot coming out of the gate from what I've seen. So, I mean, there's some teams south of Fresno that are, they got some arms, that's for sure. And even uh, a little north of Fresno. A little bit north of Fresno. A little bit Fresno. north of Fresno, a few miles. Yes. Uh, Madera's, they've been okay so far to start. But uh, I, I couldn't answer it. I said, I don't know. It seems like everybody. We're down. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's that's the nice way of putting it, Chad. I mean, really is. Not trying to be disrespectful, but there is no I can't name somebody that's just going to light up every every team every week. They're just it's just not going to happen. There's a little if you want to call it parity, that's fine. Whatever you want to call it, it seems like it's a little more even playing field. And like you said, even out of the county, like there's some decent schools. Oh yeah, that are not you know just in the track uh, or the CMAC for that matter. So uh, and it's still early. So as that gets on, maybe we'll see some teams kind of establish themselves as. I know that like I was teams. talking to Underwood the other day and they got five games in eight days and yep. it's gonna be it's gonna be busy for those arms. And Dude, this time of year always just a couple rainouts. Yeah, kind of it screws things up and, and and then I think their first round of league starts three games uh in a week. There yeah, it's just whatever. Uh and then it, it doesn't matter. Like if you find out who you think the top team's gonna be in our section here in Central Cal, 
It doesn't matter because the playoffs are going to fuck that all up anyways. Because the best team in Division Three is no longer going to be the best team in Division Three. Yeah, they're going to get moved up to Division Two, and have to play somebody that they shouldn't play. It just happened in basketball. Um, in Division Two, the same thing. You're going to have a team move up and play D one. That well, it happened to Kerman last year. Yeah, in baseball, I I Central and Clovis East got dropped down. You know, I don't think that should happen. I think if you're a Division One team, you stay Division One. That's why I like the sixteen. If you're just going to do it, just do 16, 16, 16. Just keep it the way it was. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's if no reason gotta, Kerman shouldn't have won a Division Three absolutely section title last year and be the best team in Division Three. They earned that right. They didn't earn the right to get bumped up to Division Two, be the one seed for some reason, mm-hmm. and then get blown out by the fucking the eight, 12th seed or 16th seed or whatever, you know, and that just shouldn't happen. Just like in basketball you're talking about, it shouldn't, you shouldn't have a D3 – playing a D1 team in Division 2. It doesn't make sense. I mean, I don't think teams should be going down. No. I think if you if, – like, and I told this to, to Nick uh, Papagni. I talked to him the other day. I was like, my fix is I think they're taking 12 teams this year for playoffs, not okay. 16. So they're taking 12. In each. Yes. So if I you ain't like in that. that top 12, if you're the four, you're done. Uh, that's, that's what I think. Why are you going to reward that by t- sending them down to beat teams that just got rewarded by – Moving them up. Correct. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. So, I, I mean, like I said, it doesn't matter, honestly, who the dominant teams is. Somebody's going to get screwed and have to play up. And it is what it is. Like, until they fix that, I, does it? we really going to know who the dominant team Last year, obviously, Stockdale was kind of the team to beat. Liberty yes. was really good. I mean, Buchanan was also good. Um, so, yeah, I just, my answer was, though, I have no idea. Yeah, which, I mean, there's, there's going to be some good teams. And I think... Going through these tournaments, the, the central tournament, and then there's another tournament going on, the county Coca-Cola, the Coca-Cola tournament. I think you're going to find out where they're going to play some teams that aren't in their division, in their league, and it's going to find out who's got some arms, and that's going to be the hardest part. Who's How deep are these teams? I know talking to Underwood, he's talking about his third, fourth, fifth pitcher. Talking to Ryan Smith out at Clovis East is the same way. as He's got three or four guys that are always up out of the bullpen. Um, and being able to have that depth is where you're going to find it as opposed to only in the track where they're playing three games a week, as in some of the county schools are only playing two games a week. You get a little bit more depth in trying to see where those teams are. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see the the big league here, the track that everybody talks about, um, kind of beat up on each other this year. Yeah. You might see some teams all flirting with the same record. Uh, but we'll see. Again, uh, we'll see how it goes. It's still early. But my boy Marcus is here. Um, now, last year, when you came in, I think you were still leaving for indie ball, right? Before you were going right, to the Atl- right before, right before I went to the Atlantic League, and then out of there, I don't know if we've talked on here since. No, I don't think we have. So you sign a deal with the Milwaukee Brewers, and it, now, if I remember correctly, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, was it a two year deal for a minor league contract and then invite to camp? Correct. So I I signed roughly end of June, back into June, um, signed with the Brewers, signed a two year deal. I didn't have a guarantee to go to big league camp, but I was supposed to be a two-year deal, going to go to minor league camp, and with an option to go to big league camp, most likely. Um, and so I, I threw. I was in AAA in Nashville, had a great time. My first game was a little rough. I gave up seven runs in one inning. My second inning, I, I gave up four barrels in the first, and I got three outs, thank goodness. And it was all against the Pirates organization, which was Indianapolis, I believe, at the time. Um, and get out there for the second inning, and I gave up four more barrels, except they all went over the fence. So the, I ended up giving up seven. Um, and then after that, I threw the ball well. Tough day. Yeah, tough day. <laughs> tough, tough second inning. So then after that, I threw, I threw the ball really well the rest of the year. I, I don't even know. I ended up throwing like 55, 58 innings, kind of like a swing man. Did both. Started, relieved, back, back into piggybacks. Um, it's whatever, whatever they needed it, you know what Honestly, I mean, at that point. Ex- exactly. And obviously I know that I was, you know, replaceable at that point and just trying to show that I'll take the ball at any time they, they ask me to. Um, but I end up throwing, I don't know if it was 55 or 59 innings in about two and a half months. Um, but pretty much any time they asked me, I took it. I threw the ball pretty well for the rest after my first outing. Um, was the first guy. We went to the championship game against the Tampa Bay Rays organization in Durham. We were in Vegas when we played. I was the first guy out of the bullpen, got called on, threw the ball well. And going forward, I thought I was going to go to camp with them. I talked to my coaches. They they love the way I go about my business, being a, being a pro, being around the game, helping younger kids out. 
and ended up being released, I don't know, December 10th, December 15th, a little bit before Christmas. Um, so then now I've kind of been a free agent again and kind of looking around and trying to send videos and trying to send track man stuff. And so ended up being that I thought I was walking into going into spring training and going to go to camp with them. And now it's a lot harder to get jobs as the older you get. Um, and I know analytically or on the numbers side, I might not look as sexy as some of these youngsters being 34 years old and throwing 92, 94. Um, but that's just the way the game's going now. It's it's a little bit different that five, eight, ten years ago, you would be like, hey, you got two years in the big leagues. You got a World Series ring. You've pitched a lot. You've you've shown that you can wake up every morning. I mean, you were work. a potential all-star in there 19, for a minute yeah, in 19, for that I first a, half like oh yeah. it was pretty ridiculous i yeah was, i think we even talked about being surprised that you weren't i i had two bad games right on the back end didn't against, you like that first half didn't you get to like nine wins yeah, as a reliever nine wins and like third not even 30 outings um so yeah i was i, I walked pretty good some, offense yeah. <laughs> yes it was a good offense okay, just, i wonder why yes <laughs> so that was 19 that was 19 um but yeah so it was a uh a different realm at that even in five ten years ago those guys a lot of them got jobs and and being just that veteran that the teams can count on and now it's it's a little bit harder i've been sending stuff out to a lot of different organizations and a lot of them are just saying hey we'll you know we're full for spring training they can only allow so many people i think it's i don't know if it's 150 or 180 um counting injured players and that's to fill all four rosters plus the big leagues and the minor league like the uh, AZL, GCL, instructional, affiliate, instructional league, league, all that. Um, Our extended spring. Exactly. I don't wish that on nobody, by the way. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, so they're, they're telling me that they're full, but they know that they're going to have some injuries coming up in April. Stay ready, and we're going to make some phone calls. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now, playing the little fiddle of, of where do I really – am I going to go back to playing independent ball? I got some offers to go to Mexico – um, I had some offers to go to Taiwan that I don't really necessarily want to go. It's just so far away. And knowing that I can get in a car and drive home to see my family is a lot different than knowing that I got to book a flight that costs four grand and it's a day and a half of travel. And if my kids are sick, I can, you're not going to make it home for anything. If right. Mama needs me. So right now I think the way to go about it is to go play independent ball and stay ready. Go. I'm, I'm actually going to go down to Arizona here in probably about almost two weeks, 10 days or so. And go throw, hopefully, for some teams. I'm going to go down there. There's going to be some scouts down there. So go throw and just keep on grinding, man. Keep on keep on putting That's what you do. That's, I mean, that's, to say your career has been a roller coaster is... That'd be an understatement. Yeah. Because, um, listen, we we talk about the good, the flashy, the the call-up, the mm -hmm. the debut. And we've, we've talked to guys that have gotten to leave on their own terms. Bobby Jones being a guy that few, got to walk away from the game. Oh, yeah. And like Chad, you experienced this, and I don't know if we've ever got into being released. And most players experience that more than the other, the getting the call up and the debut. Oh yeah. Um, and we never really highlight that phone call of hey, or the meeting with the manager or whoever it is that says, "Listen, man, we're we're letting you go." Um, it's not the first time it's happened to you. I think it's the fifth or sixth now. Like this last one. Was it any different, though, than maybe the first one? Um, I would – the one that got me was the one with the Red Sox, was one of the tougher ones. Um, was that because it was kind of out of left field a little bit? A little bit of both of them, honestly. With the Red Sox, I had – that month – now, I didn't throw very good before that. I had a really good spring training in 21. I didn't really throw very good, and that would be April. We had the – uh, 60-man roster thing, and then we started in May. So May and June, probably the first six weeks, I didn't throw the ball real well. My velo was kind of down. But the next four weeks, I had a 1-1 ERA. I was throwing the ball really well. Um, when I got called in the office, I had one of my best friends was there. He was making a rehab start, made a rehab stint with me, and they thought I was going to the big leagues when I got called in the office. And it was actually the, the polar opposite. So that was the one that really threw me off guard. Um, I got called in and they said, hey, you know, we're just we're going to go at a younger pace. We're going to get some guys from double A in here. And then I was one of the few guys, obviously one of the older guys at that point. I think I was 32 at the time um, that ended up getting released out with the Red Sox. So I ended up getting picked up with the Cubs. We kind of talked a little bit about that last time. Yeah, yeah. This one was more of, hey, we just don't really see you making a triple A team with what we got going. Now, if you saw with the Brewers this offseason, they traded 
like Renfro and some other guys, and they grab like five or six, I would call them 4A players, 4A pitchers, guys that have been in the big leagues and also more times in AAA. Um, not as much time as I had in the big leagues, not as much experience, but they're a little bit younger than me. They're 28, 29. They probably throw two to three miles an hour harder than I do. Um, so that was kind of what they've told me. I talked to Flanagan, and he's our GM of the, of the Brewers, and he goes, you know, we just don't – we think you would have a better chance with a different organization – walking into camp and they would give you a better chance than what we think we can give you. Um, and I, at the time I, okay, I wasn't going to get paid a whole lot of money at the time. I kind of took a, a deal coming out of indie ball where my hands were tied behind my back. So I, you know, I called my yeah, wife but that, that at your age probably feels worth it for the opportunity. Oh, oh like you're not going to pass up the opportunity for, I'm going to go play independent ball the for amount of money to go get my right. chance. To you're go. already, you're already not making a no, lot of money. No, exactly. Where the, you were. The, the opportunity is way more worth it. You know, at the end of the day, if I can get back to the big leagues and I think I can, and that's the only reason that I really keep driving, I think I can pitch in the big leagues right now. It's all about execution. I've been throwing the ball really well this off season, executing well. Um, and that's at the end of the day. It doesn't, I don't think it matters if you're throwing 92 or 95, you faced it. If you know where you're putting it and you know how to get guys out and your experience and how to, how to control your heart rate, know what the situations are, you know how the, the nuances and the inside part of the game, that's the big part of it. I'm not just up there throwing 96 and flinging it and not really knowing what I'm doing. Um, so going back to that, like Flanagan calls and he's like, you know, you, we talked to all your coaches, your coaches loved you. They said, you're, you know, the ultimate pro, you've done a lot of things right. You took care of a lot of kids. You know, I, there was a lot of 26, 28 year olds that one was just starting to be a pitcher this year. He was a, a, a or a transfer third baseman that became a pitcher and just taking him under my wing. We had a young kid, Robert Gasser, talk to him a lot about just pitching and understanding being yourself. Don't, don't try to conform to what other people try to make you and things like that. So that was kind of, that's, I like that role. I, it's, it's getting into the coaching, but also the mentorship and, and, but you can do it as a player. Um, we had Josh Lindblom who was making $4 million doing the same thing. And I was going to make a lot percentage under that. <laughs> Uh, not four million dollars, um, and but like so he was very good at it. So he was like that team veteran. I had a lot of guys thinking I was going to come back and be the dad of the group, the dad of the bullpen, and kind of Limbloom took care of the, the starters as I took care of a lot of the bullpen guys. Just knowing it and and giving guys instructs instruction and ways to get ready. What do we what are we looking at? What are we looking for? Um, when are we getting ready? How does your arm feel? How to get ready on an everyday basis? So, like, that kind of stuff I really like doing personally. Um, so, it was a shock that I was going to get released. I thought I was at least going to go to camp if they didn't like me. Did, the, did the thought of it being done cross your mind? Like, um, I don't know. I, I Well, I mean, so that's two, a no. Yeah, no, I, I don't really want to be done yet. I, I still got some fire to play. Even, like, so I got released, and it was actually two days before Ovi got the job at Fresno State. And I think I talked to you personally about this. I was very close. So he got the job, I think, on a Thursday or a Friday. And I asked uh, Brian Oliver for his number, and I was like, if I'm going to call him, i got to call him by Sunday. You know, me and my wife talked, and I was like, I want to I think I want to volunteer to be the coach. And I'm kind of rattled, I, a little pissed off. I got, I got released. Am I going to be done? I'm 34, whatever. And so by Sunday, I figured out that there's no way. There's no way. I'm not giving up yet. So I, I ended up not texting him. I told him at the city dinner, I was like, I, dude, I was an inch away from calling you. And to volunteer, to be the coach, that would be, that would be cool to kind of step my foot into that, that next career of my, of my life. Um, but I don't want to do that yet. I want to keep playing. I like, I like competing. I threw against some high school kids the other day. And just getting on the mound and knowing that, that guy's out there competing against you is one of the coolest feelings in the world. So being able to do that at the highest level, that's the next goal. And you can go. Do from you think ball. it's ever going to fade though? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm in the physically in the best shape of my life. That is, I will, I will give you that. Uh, I, yes. uh, I've, I was in, I mean, I've always been in pretty good shape personally, but even in my young twenties, I just did things to kind of get me going as now, obviously I'm older. I got more experience. I'm in the best throwing shape. Just because my velo isn't up, but like understanding my body, recovering well, um, my diet, the way I go about my business, I'm in the best. I mean, I'm. I took a. I was telling you, I took a bio test, like a lab test thing, to see you can see like your bio age, and so I'm 34 years old, 34 and a half now, 
and my bio age, my first time I did it, I was 29. The second time I did it, I was 28. So I'm at like six and a half, seven percent body fat. My muscle mass is unbelievable. <laughs> like it's it's crazy to think like, and I was two thirty. You're older too. I'm older. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what I've had some buddies, and even the guy that I went to his place in Virginia, he's like, bro, I'm like three years older on that test than I am in age, and he's 37. He's like, that thing says I'm like 42, and he goes, I I haven't seen anybody over the age of 30 with a younger age on him, and you know, it's just a, to me, it's just being able to go to work and I love doing it. I love the workout side probably more than I do like the practice throwing a baseball side. The competing side is the best part about the whole game going out there and competing every day. But my second favorite thing is probably the workout side and being able to know that I'm going to outwork everybody else, no matter what their age is. If they're 22 or they're 32. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to put my work in and look myself in the mirror. And we talked about this also is I'll never say, I wish I would have. I might say, I wish I would have retired a year earlier. Who knows? Only time will tell when I'm 40, 45, I'll I'll look back and and see when I, if, when I do step away, if that was the right time or not. The, the release part, is it, how short lived is like the, I guess after the fifth time, is is the anger gone or like sadness or whatever it is? Like, is it immediate or do you go get alone for an hour and then it's Okay process everything else that other options or things that you can go do or is it instant so like this one was on. a little bit different because it was my first time throwing lives throwing bullpens actually and i was getting ready to throw a bullpen and they called me at 8 30 that morning i went through my bullpen at 10 30 i sent it to the next team on to the next you got to keep it rolling i mean there's 30 other teams there's eight teams in korea there's 12 teams in japan there's 20 teams in Mexico expansion teams. They keep exactly. talking about what, right, let's go already. So, you know, and one of them that I text was Dave Dombrowski and he messaged me probably about 30 minutes later, which was one of the coolest things. And all I said was, I just looked for an opportunity. And that was with the Phillies. Um, obviously Connor Brogdon's over there. I actually watched him pitch last night. Um, and that would be a, a good opportunity for me. Just knowing that he's the one that gave me my chance in 18 and 19. Um, I threw the ball well for him and he knows that I'm going to, I'm going to wake up every day and go to work. So that was one of the cool things that he texted me immediately and said, hey, the same, same is we're full and we are going to look once season starts we, and we know we're going to have injuries. Of we course. know it happens. Make sure you're ready. Be ready. Keep sending us stuff and we'll keep looking. Was that the same for you? Like you, you had your couple as well. Like it wasn't just the Giants, you know, with the Rockies. Uh, did you have an opportunity with Seattle or was it just those two? No, it was Giants, Rockies. Calgary Vipers, Wichita Wingnuts. I got traded in Kalamazoo. That was a weird one. And then the Gateway Grizzlies was my last time. But like yeah. the... the No, nah, the first one was the worst. Yeah. Oh, my first one, yeah. Because it, it, it's the first time you've ever experienced it. You've never... Well, and you're young, so are you guys thinking, oh, yeah. dude, it's this is it. It's over. Yeah. Well, because you're still, I mean, you're kids still. You're still freaking mid 20s. I was 22. The, yeah. So, I mean, you're still a kid. Like, I was 22. And it's all you've ever done. And somebody's now telling you you're not doing this anymore. You're like, good, I go back to like another one that, 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 if you're listening, like Murdy's, Murdy, uh, Alec Merton, it's episode 102. It's right after Chris Heron. That's why I remember that. That's good. But like his, disgu- like when he talks about not wanting to take that last AB in spring training because it's been a long day, this dude's pumping whatever and and then to know that that would have been his last ab like that's how quickly it could be gone like 100 percent. that one always rings with me a little bit too um do you have those thoughts did you have those thoughts i mean like chad i don't think we've ever really discussed this no i just i just led the team in rbis and homers my year before i'm not thinking i'm going anywhere i just had the low a manager pull me and our first round catcher aside and said you're gonna be the leaders of our low a team this year because they sent a lot of our team up to high A, mm-hmm. um, which I knew was going to happen because the, the first baseman was a draft pick, like a higher draft pick, but he had – the only reason I went to short season was he had – he failed his um, – The physical. The physical because yeah. he had a heart issue. So that was the only reason I got my opportunity anyways because I was a low draft pick and I tore it up. And then – so I knew he was going to high A. I was going to low A, and I had no clue. I did everything. I was showing up 
like because all the coaches work out early like before oh, yeah. everybody get there like at five so i get th- i got there when they got there and i was doing extra workouts i'd go with the catchers because catchers are always there early i would go with them i'd work out early before anybody got there because then i was in early groups too with hitting and stuff <clears throat> and i remember they walked in and they called me and they said hey chad chicken wants to talk to you i'm like oh man i'm getting released like laughing it off because how the fuck am i getting released Uh, from what i just you're not thinking that no i just fucking put up numbers and i was having a good spring training and the manager just said i was going to be the leader of the low a team i get in there and they're like well you know we're gonna go younger yep i'm fucking 22 22. (laughs) we're going with a 16 year old that we signed for three mil that i didn't realize I've been coaching all through spring training Mm -hmm. because he moved from third to first. And guess who's teaching him all the bunt plays? Me. Guess who's teaching him all the shit around the bag and everything? Me. I was fucking coaching him to take my job, which I know is a possibility at the time. Oh, yeah. But I'm not thinking that it's going to happen because he was in Arizona. So I'm thinking they're getting him ready for a short season, you know, or something. Extended spring. Yeah. And and do because he's 16. You know, I'm, so I'm not thinking of it. And I remember when they told me that, I just, like, lost it. I lost it emotionally. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. Yeah, I'm 22 thinking my career's over. You're pretty much telling me I'm – you're not saying I'm not good enough. You're saying I'm not young enough. I'm fucking 22. Yeah. And I, they, it, and when you're only getting to get older. Like, it's not – you can't go backwards. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, and, that, well, and, that's and I, did, I that's, did everything they told me because I went to instructional league after our season – which you know, if you go to instruction league, you're on the radar yeah. for the organization. Like I wasn't to supposed go. to go because I wasn't. It, they normally take the first ten to twenty rounds, and I was a forty second rounder. But I had such a good year that they invited me to instructional league. I did really good. I went to conditioning camp in December, which wasn't because I was fat and overweight, because everybody goes to conditioning camp, and I was there with the big league trainers doing conditioning camp. So I'm thinking like, and I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. I had a meeting with Saban in his fucking office at conditioning camp saying, hey, we need you. We don't necessarily need you to lose weight. We need you to trim up. I went from like 23% body fat to like 16 for how big I, I was 270. So it was 16% body fat. That's pretty good yeah. at, that, at that weight. So I came back, did everything they told me to, and then get released. To so say yeah. it was a shock is mild. Oh, it was a fucking, right. that was, that's why it was so bad. And then my low weight, my short season manager was crying when I came out of the door. Like, like, how is this possible? Like, I, you were just my horse. Yeah. Like. And, and that's what, I mean, as you get older, like coaching the kids up. And I enjoy it now because I know that it's about, I don't want to say giving back to the younger generation. Because that's kind of eyewash in my opinion. But it's more about just. You know that your what your experience is is only going to help these guys, and so as you get older, you you know that's going to happen. I had a lot of guys do it for me, but at 22, 23 years old, it's more of like, hey, I'll help you out, kid. Well, as that's, to, and that's maybe a little different because you you're you're low A fighting for your life every oh, day. Yeah. When you get to the big leagues, it's like, no, I, I, need, I need you, you to, to be me. like me. Oh yeah, to this help is how we else do it. win. This, this is, is how, how we, we win, it. and if you ain't on board with it. It ain't gonna work, and that's that's the, you're not so much competing with each other at that point. Whereas you, that's all you did. Yeah, like correct. we shared on the same team, you know, but we're all battling against each other at the same time. Oh yeah, and that, and that's where the individual side of this game is hard. But at the same time, being a good teammate, being a good a good person, it can get it can bite you on the butt on the back end, and it, it does to a lot of guys. But you, as you see now, there's not a whole lot of guys like. I mean, obviously Joey Votto is still batting 300. He's got one of the best eyes in the game. But those kind of guys, Albert Pulhouse is Clayton Kershaw getting a, a deal where his stuff now isn't necessarily worth the money, but his mentorship and the way he's going to go about his business and show these younger kids how to go about their business. You see that you saw that a lot eight, 10, 12 years ago. Um, and so now that that's kind of gone is now they're looking at getting a younger 23 year old because they can option them up and down and, and have six options. And it's a different they, do, they go about their business a little bit different nowadays in the in the game of professional baseball especially in the big league level um and that's where trying to stick around is one of the hardest things i I had a buddy of mine his name is bobby Karecki, one awesome dude worked his tail off was always in the weight room he would do anything for the blue jays at the time and i always told him and i just talked to him two years ago he's a scout with the mariners now pro scout with the mariners 
And I saw him and he would ask me, he was asking me about guys they were looking to trade for. And I'd give them whatever I had on them as a person, what I thought, if they're big league ready, if they're big league, if they're not going to be a big leaguer, things like that. But I always told him, I said, I want to be like you, Bob. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm not making money. I'm, I, I get on, put on the phantom every other week. I said, but you're 34, 35 years old. You're still playing the game. You still love it. You still go around doing your work. Like to me, that's the coolest part is how do you how do you stay in the game that long as a player and still be able to get back and help the other guys and you know you know your role you understand what you're doing and he's he was he still got called up for one game he still got his big league insurance for the year he still took care of his family he was still making some good money I mean he was making on the north side of a hundred thousand for the year which is not bad money especially playing minor league baseball but that's what he was one of the coolest guys, and I'll never forget that. That was 2010, 11, 12 is when I was kind of rounding around with him. I was in A ball, double A. He was in triple A the whole time. Um, and he was in triple A even when I got to triple A in 14 with the Blue Jays. And so now that he's on the pro side of scouting, it's still a good connection. He actually called me this year. Was it this year or last year? This year he called me and asked if I wanted to be the triple A pitching coach in Tacoma. He said they had an opening, and I was like, man, I'm still trying to play. He's like, oh, I'm – Sorry to sorry to you know do that to you. So that doesn't like intrigue you at all. I even, mean, it does, but it sounds like it was a pretty quick no. <laughs> it was a quick no. Okay, so um, it doesn't. And, and I mean, it does, but like, I don't want to do that yet. I think it's. I got some guys. I've had coaches that are younger than me, and I think it's to me it's funny because I mean you're you're younger than me. You have less playing experience than me, but you want to get into that coaching, and I like the. I like being – I'd rather be that same mentor and, and coach, in essence, but as a player. I think you get more respect <laughs> – get more respect that way. I think that guys actually – they go about their business and they try to follow your footsteps as opposed to you telling them what to do. I'm not a real big – I don't like telling people what to do. I like showing them what I'm doing and why I've been able to play for 16 years, 17 years, and why that's a, a way to go about their business. Even when I talk well, to – Well, and they could probably quickly say, hey, this that doesn't – is not feeling – not working for me. Yeah. And, and, and you can kind of – you've you've shown the experiences or, hey, what do you got on – and if they want to show me something, I'll listen and I'll, I'll work on it and be like, hey, this is kind of what I feel when you're doing that. Or mechanically, I mean, I, like I told you, I went to Virginia and learned a bunch of new drills and all sorts of stuff that I'm always open to learning and, and trying to figure out a new way to, to get my mechanics better or teach better. Any of that stuff is kind of – that's where that, the realm of baseball is going and – Getting into that, getting into some of the coaching stuff is what I've kind of gotten into the last six months. And well, you've yeah, been doing months. it around here a lot uh, yes. with the high schools in our area for free. Yes, for sure. And I don't know if people out there in our area saw it again. Central California, this guy. Uh, you were bringing the rap soto out. I had a rap soto then. I I actually just bought a track man. Um, I actually got it about a week ago. So I've been kind of farting around with that and learning that. So, yeah, this offseason, I, I messaged, I don't, know, I don't know, 11, 13, 15 coaches, roughly. High school coaches. All high school coaches. Um, and just trying to trying to get the Valley better at pitching and and showing them what kind of what the way the game is going into the analytics and just why this computer is what it is doing. Um, I had three or four coaches that really caught on to what I was doing and liked what I was doing, and they were calling me. And what I told them is, I said, just text me when you're running bullpens. When you're running bullpens, first come, first serve. You text me and say, hey, I'm throwing on Tuesday. If you're the first one to text me, I go there. And I, I probably went to I probably went to nine or ten different schools. Um, as season kind of got closer, coaches started getting a little bit more nervous on when they're throwing bullpens or trying to find a day. Um, but there were some that, even if they were throwing three or four guys, I was going. Um, I just actually worked with Washington Union again the other day. Um, even though it was obviously it was raining, so we knew that we could have a couple days off. They're going to play today. I think they're playing today. Um, but going out there, and now with the track, man, it's just more accurate. It's a better device. It was 5 or 6X what the Rapsodo is. As in, like, right now, you go out there with a Rapsodo. On the on the high school side, it's it's really good. You can understand it. Um, it's pretty – I would say it's pretty cheap to buy, three or $4,000. As in, a track, man, is a lot more expensive to buy. They're twenty to $25,000, depending on what, what model you get. Um, so it's harder to, harder to understand as in the rap Soto, if you understand what, what you're getting into, not only understanding how to read it, but also how to develop that into a pitcher. So a lot of like, I had a lot of kids, um, 
working on breaking balls. And I'd have the coach saying, hey, what you do, we just can't figure out if it's a slider, if it's a curveball. We just can't figure out. All right, let's see what the computer says and how they're, how they're spinning the baseball. Why, why are we going to create a curveball compared to a slider? How their hand works, throwing change-ups. Um, we had some lefties from one of the schools that he just kept cutting baseballs in, in, in. And they were trying to teach him to throw a change-up away. That's not the way his hand works. So, like, trying to give the coaches some advice. So, I was going to these fields, going to the high schools, working with the head coach, with the pitching coaches, and just letting them know the knowledge that we have, letting them know, like, seeing it on the rap soto. So, they like, most of our kids are visual learners, right? You could tell them anything you want till you're blue in the face, and they're not going to understand it because they don't really feel anything yet. They don't control their body the way that I do. Now, I can, you can tell me something. I'm trying to understand how I feel it as in a lot of these kids are learning it as a visual learner. Um, that's why phones are really good. That's why when they do presentations, they use slide screens, right? It's not just about the words you use. It's about how do you show it to them in a, in where their eyes can see it. And that's what the rap soda was really doing. And, and it worked out really well. It would help a lot of guys understand how they're breaking balls spinning and working through that. And we got some, we got quite a few guys to learn some breaking balls this off season. And I think from the guys that I've, that we've worked with, they've had some pretty good success. Are you going to keep doing it? I am. I am going to keep doing it. Um, and right now, I what I want to do is I want to get into where the boosters will kind of – I'm not looking to make a lot of money, but being able to have some money, being able to come out there. I just bought a $20,000, $25,000 machine, so trying to get that paid back for. Um, like I've had a couple of teams, and what I found out was being able to go to the high school. I'm there for an hour and a half, two hours, whatever, however many guys they want to throw – I think what we've kind of talked about was bringing if the boosters were willing to pay anywhere between $100 and $150 for me to go to their field while with their coaches, I'd be more than happy to do it. I know like my personal lessons when I charge personal lessons are anywhere between $80 and $120 an hour. So I'm not trying to do it for one person. I'm trying to help all their whole pitching staff. But I'm not trying to do it. I'm not trying to do, hey, I want to go to Clovis West or Union or whatever every other day or every day. It's once every two or three weeks. This is what I want you to work on your next two or three bullpens. Work on that. Let's work. Let's see how you're progressing. And then now your coaches can help you as well. I'm not just, I don't want to be the only pitching coach. That's not what I'm, I want to help as many kids in the Valley as possible. But also I still got four kids at home and my wife at home and, and being able to just make a little bit of money to do it as where I'm not just going to keep I donated probably three months of my time this off season, which was fun. I had an absolute blast doing it and letting guys know that there is value in it. Um, so yeah, I, what I'm trying to do is get their pitching coaches to get a little bit better, to help their kids out and understand how to, how to help their players and then it's keep like, it rolling. Uh, is it, it D I B mobile? You I mean, will? whatever you want to call it, man. I mean, I, uh, I want to start a pitching, like a, uh, a pitching development program, I think I'm going to do it next off season. Um, it's just a matter of I'm never home. I'm never, I haven't really done pitching lessons since 2016 when I started my family and when I started going to uh, winter ball and that's, I might go to winter ball again this off season. So that's where I'm like, you gotta, you gotta know that you're going to be home. You gotta know that you're going to give, I'm not going to sign somebody up or say I'm going to do something without knowing I'm going to be home and knowing that, all right, I'm done playing when I'm done, when I'm retired, I will full-fledged get into coaching. And if that's in the coaching in the high school game, obviously I've had some opportunities to coach in the pro game. Um, I think I'll still be in the pro game at some point. My agent actually just said that he's got a job for me mentoring kids and doing some stuff on the, on the agency side and with his agent, with his kids that he has. He has about 100 clients, I believe. Um, so being able to talk kids into – from getting drafted all the way up to what what are you going to expect walking in instructs extended spring all the way to the big leagues getting released and back down to independent ball and trying to be more of a mentor and, and there's not a whole lot of things that I haven't done um, in the game of baseball as as in from independent ball back to AAA to being in the big leagues to I was an in independent ball 368 days after being in the big leagues in 2014. So the ups and downs is one of the bit, the hardest things, and we've talked about the ups and downs and the grind, the roller coaster of baseball, and and how do you stay level headed? How do you how do you keep pushing forward? And uh, I think I've persevered quite a bit of it, and I think I could be a good resource for a lot of kids, not only kids as kids as in being anywhere from 
14 to 25, 26 years old um, would be something that I, I'm passionate about, and I, I like doing it. So where would they, I mean, if people want to get involved, where do they just contact you privately on your you can, social media? Yeah, or? you can get on my social media. I think I'm actually. Instagram. I know you yeah, don't do I, Twitter. I don't do Twitter. I, I try to stay away from most social media. I usually get on it in the mornings when I'm like foam rolling and working out. Just right on while I'm riding my bike and foam rolling is about the only time I'm on social media. So if I don't respond, it's probably because I'm doing other things with my life. Um, but yeah, you can hit us up on our DIB account or on my on my private account. I know there's I have some weird like Marcus Walden sixty four. That's not me. Um, once I got to the big leagues, I did get verified. So if I have a check on it, that's mine. There's the two or three other ones that they got a lot of pictures of me. I don't know where they get them from, but it's not my account. <laughs> I mean, it's it's. I know Madera did it. Uh, Andy oh, yeah. loved it. Uh, a lot of the pitchers got a lot of great feedback from it. Um, so reach out to Marcus. I that's why I kind of asked, like, you know, are you done? Are you is what's the yet, future man. hold? Not and that's what I mean. I can go to Mexico. I've had quite a few offers to go down to Mexico. I just don't. To me, and I don't want to say this bad, but I feel like that's selling out. My goal is to get back to the big leagues. It's hard to get out of Mexico. I can go to Mexico and make some good money. There's some good money in Mexico. Um, but I would rather take that chance and take less of a financial in, uh, investment and go to independent ball if I have to for a couple of weeks because I've had so many teams tell me that once injuries happen and maybe I'm chasing a carrot that's not there. I don't know. Only time will tell. Uh, you will always look back and say, you know, did I do it the right way? And it worked out for me last year. I got picked up on the back end of June. I would think I was like the third or fourth pitcher picked up. All three were from – we actually had five guys picked up. I think I was a fifth. Three of the five were on my team. Um, so I'm most likely going to go back to Gastonia, which is the end of April, which if that's what happens. I like what I'm doing right now, though. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun coaching some kids. Um, I'll do my first personal lesson in like seven years on Monday. So we'll kind of see how that how that rolls. I've been doing a couple of classes with some young kids, doing some young. I, I think I posted it on a, on my social media, doing some young kids doing like a total class for like ten and unders, doing little kid pitching. Um, so it's just fun to kind of get into the beginning of baseball and see that love that kids have for the game. Is that's what kind of brings you back to it. I mean, I've had it three times to me now where I was like, man, I'm getting pissed off about the game, and then you go and coach some kids and. They don't even – the business side of the game is that's where all the BS is. You you understand the the, the love of the game right. is – They're, they're innocent to all that. And keep it that way. I had yeah. a kid, a college kid go, hey, what do I talk to my this agent? <laughs> Let me deal with that. You just go out there and throw the baseball, put up some zeros. We'll worry about the draft. We'll worry about getting your agent. We'll worry about all that other stuff on draft day. Until then, nah. don't worry about the ba the business side. It's, it's a lot of nonsense that – I don't personally like, but I know I've, I've been in it for the last, I'd say the last eight to 10 years has been the business side of getting released, understanding of the numbers and, and all of it. So that's where the longer you can stay away from playing GM and playing the business side and calling your agent and dealing with that stuff, what other people think, go out there and play for yourself. Don't worry about what other people are saying. Don't worry about what other people, oh, you got to post it to make sure other people see you work out. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do it for you. Do it for the mirror. I heard somebody say something in relation to a, another field recently. I think I told you this. I might have told you the same thing. And it was talking about, you know, the younger age of uh, people in this particular field caring about, you know, their followers, caring about the perception and what's perceived or what people see versus being good at what they do. 100%. And I was like, man, that's really true. I see that a lot. And I mean, I'm guilty of it. I'm sure in the past, um, maybe even with this, you know, um, but I was like, yeah, it makes, you know, I see that I see kids like worried about this social media side of things or what this looks like to everybody else. And that's more focused on that than being a complete player or being a complete oh, yeah. employee or whatever it is you're doing, like whatever you're doing in life. And I just had a talk with a Fresno city coach to what on that was Tuesday so two days ago and that's what he he's like man I don't know if it's the group that we're with but it's more about what the social media is saying about my work ethic or way I go about it and I actually sent this to a lot of my friends I had uh, Goggins 
one of his things was, I think I sent it you to you. You sent it to me. Yeah, I got you it. You know, there's not one hater that's doing more than you. And that's one of my favorite things. Like, if they're hating on you, it's because they're doing less and they wish they were doing what sure. you were doing. Yeah. Um, and that's just a good way to go about it, in my opinion. I mean, I've, if the guy that's trying to help you is one thing, but the guy that's talking nonsense to you is not doing more than you, more times than not. And, uh, and Goggins had some demons and I don't want, I wouldn't want to go through those demons, but he's got some good advice and, uh, He's one hard nosed. He is, right man. There. He's a psychopath. He's, I love yes, it. Yes, he he's gone through some stuff. Um, you mentioned spring training. It's yep. underway. Oh yeah. Uh, I wanted to get in this. Yeah. Uh, the rule changes have finally come into play, and I've watched a few spring training games. I don't know if you've watched a lot, Chad. The clock has been probably the most prominent in the news as far as affecting a couple games. Is real simple question. Your thoughts. Both of you. You can go first because I had to deal with the clock a little bit last year. <clears throat> I don't, by watching it, I feel like it's not. I feel like it's not as big of a deal, just getting used to it, I guess. But what's the problem with being in the box on time? Or I mean, do you really need to? I mean, you have what eight seconds to get in the box? Eight or nine seconds, I believe. I think that's enough time to collect your thoughts, or think about the next pitch, or. I mean, and you got to be engaged, not just in the box. You have yes. to engage the pitcher. Yeah. So, and you're still waiting for him because he has all 20 seconds to throw the ball to to start his windup. So this is where I, I saw Correa the other day, like hit a foul ball, and he like turns around and gets out of the box, and he's and then he like turns around and jumps back into the box because he forgot. Like you don't got time. Yeah. To clear your head, like all right, that was a heater away. I fouled it off. What am I getting next? Like we forget this game is mental. Um, but like on my pit on the pitching side is I had five times last year, I threw 55 innings roughly. I had five times that I got called for a ball and all five turned into a walk. It was either a two, two count or a three, two count. Um, and I didn't like that. I actually was really mad about it. I, I didn't like it at all because it changes the way the game goes along. Like I had a, a 12 pitch at bat with DeYoung. He was in triple A, the shortstop with the Cardinals for a long time. And it was like a 12-pitch at-bat, a foul ball, foul ball, foul ball. And now I'm thinking about, I'm rubbing up the baseball. All right, how am I going to get him out? I want to throw a front hip cutter. I got to go through signs. And we just didn't get to it. We never got to the front hip cutter. And that's one of the hardest parts to me as a pitching side. I don't get that one step off like they do. It's a hitters they can call time one time. Uh, one of my teammates last year, Tyler White, was really good. Anytime he got to two strikes, he was calling time. It was automatic. I mean, I watched him get 185, 200 at bats. Once he got to two strikes, time. He took his time. He got his at bat, get his batting gloves back together and get to going. But now, what I'm seeing, but now, like we saw Scherzer, and you're going to see it a lot more pitchers calling their own game. So Scherzer had the little pitch comp thing on their on their thing. I don't like how the batter has to be engaged with the pitcher when they're not getting signs. The reason why they got to be engaged is so you're not stealing signs, so you're not just looking at the catcher, right? That's part of the reason in the minor leagues we still have to give signs. We don't have the, the pitch calm thing, calm thing yeah. right? So I will watch Marcus Stroman throw the other day. He's not on the rubber. He's – I want to stand up and do it. But his toes are off the rubber, and he's shaking his head, and you you know what's going on. He's listening to the pitch calm on what pitch he's throwing. He gets onto the – and I told Nicole – I told my wife, I said, hey – He's about to get a delay a game. He had six seconds left. He puts his foot on the rubber and immediately goes. It's because he's already got the sign. You didn't. You don't need to get on the rubber to get your sign anymore, which was a rule in baseball that you can't get signs off the rubber. Off yeah. the rubber, right? So now you can be walking around like you catch the ball back from the pit, from the catcher. You can already get your sign in your ear while before you even toe the slap. So you can mess around with a rosin bag. You can do whatever you need to. So that's where I think. We shouldn't have too many delay of games on the pitching side with the with the pitch calm. It's a little bit harder shaking or saying yes, um, but I still don't like it. I don't. I Do don't. you think it's necessary? Because I, I, the the, so it's, the it's, only it's, thing that brings up is the time. We've we've again we've exhausted this topic. The, the length of game is about twenty five minutes shorter. Now in spring training, there's not many pitching changes. 
There's a lot of fastballs. There's a lot of early swinging. There's a or lot the of pitching th- changes happen between innings. It's just running a new guy out. Oh yeah, that is you're not making. You're in- not stopping an inning. Right, the pitch change unless somebody's just which I was like those can't find the zone. And rarely, and in, in spring training, it, it, they're few and far between. And sometimes they'll call an inning. Even I've seen it. Yeah, they'll roll it. Um, so that's where I think the game is still going to be. We might say 15 minutes. Now. Last year, we had a couple games that were super quick, but it was also a three to two ball game. There was only eight hits. There was no walks. Those are all fast games. Madison Bumgarner's thrown games where they're two hours and 10 minutes. Fresno State just played, uh, was it Saturday's game uh, yeah. against Omaha? It was a min- an hour, 59 minutes. Mm-hmm. Nine inning game. And it's just good. I pitching. mean, they have a pitch clock, right? But yeah. it's. I mean, and the, the thing with the pitch clock, I was thinking is like, why is it that like, I feel it, like it hurts the hitters more than the? Oh, I, I agree with you. See, I'm the other way around personally, as as a pitcher, because I have control of the game. The game, the whole life, all of my life is I start the game. I start when play starts. Right? There's nothing that can go on until I'm ready. Right? You See, have, but the, I have, but I have to be ready. Before you're ready, and even you, st- you and still you can, have time, and you can oh, take yeah. as much time as you want. But I have to be in the in eight seconds. I have to have both my feet in the box, and ready I to go. I don't personally like that, but you also have the option to call time, as in we don't for so one one time. Though? One time, I don't get that option. Nobody on, nobody out. I can't step off. I got to keep it going. Like I went middle of my windup, st- shaking, still s- like getting my sign while I'm going through my windup. On a two-two pitch, that's nonsense, in my opinion. Yeah, it is. So, I, no, I agree, uh, but no, I, if I think gave me the same option. If we have the same accountability of you get one time, I get one time. Like I could step off, and so I would just step. Like if there's a guy on base, I get to pick twice. So I didn't have any. I didn't have any issues with the guys on base and having a delay a game. Does that make sense? Because yeah. I was able to just pick or just step off and look at the runner. Like I'm, I'm literally wasting time. Um, but with guys on second base, I got to give multiple signs. So I got to give five signs. I got to shake. I got to first. I got to think about what pitch I want to throw. Me and my catcher got to be on the same page. I got to get my my pitch. I got to shake. He's got to go through another set of five signs. It's taking all a second, second and a half each one. And now I got to come set, check the runner, make sure we're stopping his feet. Once that clock goes to one, the runner's taken off. You're seeing more stolen bags already. Um, and so I understand the hitting side. Like you got to be locked in. But even in 2009, it was one of the very first times I've ever seen it. It was always you had to keep one foot in the box. So we had They Eric, did that when I was there, too. Right, in 2009. So I was in A-ball. I think it started in 07. Maybe. I remember Eric Thames, we're in A-ball, high A, and he's got his bad call, 1-1 one, one count, gets like a sinker away, strike two. He like steps both feet out of the box, and he gets his batting gloves on, and the guy automatically, he just rings him up. I'm just – and he takes a practice swing, and, and – Thames loses it. If you guys know who Eric Thames is, he's like one of the jackedest people in yeah, Major been, League Baseball. Yeah. Right? He just retired. But that was that was like one of the very first times I ever saw like the two feet in the box rule. So they've done the two feet in the box and I don't I just don't like the whole time. The coolest thing about baseball is there is no time limit. You can't run the clock out like we did in the Super Bowl. There's no you still got to get all 27 outs. It's all about throwing strikes, right? You throw four balls before you throw three strikes, the guy gets a base. Right, we're not going to change it. We're not going to get to one-one counts, um, things like that. Like that is the coolest thing about baseball, in my opinion. You cannot run the clock out, and you there's no penalty for thinking. But now, when you get guys like Baez who are taking fifty-five seconds yeah, to deliver a, a pitch, I'm not saying it's not and ridiculous so, sometimes. What, yeah, and but I would be. I'm. I was one of the worst. But like, look at football. Football is extremely fast-paced. Their play clock is longer than the baseball pitch clock. Correct. I'm right. thinking that if the defense isn't ready, they fucking run the play. Yes. That's on the defense. So if the hitter is not ready, pitch the ball. It's on the hitter. That's right. And that's and that's my That's why I, I agree with Chad. Like I don't like the eight seconds to be ready. Yeah. Like I get being engaged because of signs or whatever, but really come on. But the 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 pitch com sped up the game fast enough in my opinion, because now you're not running through signs. You're it's hard to steal signs. I agree signs. to that. Like it was it was it was harder to steal signs. There's a lot of things that, For sure. that went through the pitch comm, and I still have never had it on me. Well, um, and you, you had an inside info. I want to get to it because I'm pressed for time a little bit, but you had a little info on, like, credible, like, <laughs> it's about as credible as of it gets. why the... Yeah, some of the rule some changes. Of the rule changes. The, the clock, particularly, like, the survey part of it. 
what you what you were told um the no the the survey part of the clock no like they were surveyed of like why changes like why they are yeah so um joe tory is what is he to the, the commission he's pretty commissioner. much the player the commissioner whatever yeah. um Rajay Davis now works for him. Okay. And a buddy of mine is working at the Rangers Royals facility and saw Rajay, his brother played with him in, in the in the bigs. So they were talking and he was like, Man, I'd really talk, love to talk to the commissioner about these rule changes. And Rajay was like, Oh yeah, what do you what do you want to say? What do you want to say? So he starts saying it, you know, the um the stolen base thing, the bags. He pretty much named all the rule changes and he's like, Well, you know, we did a survey of the most exciting things in baseball, like what fans think oh, are the yeah. most exciting things. Home run and number two was stolen base. 100%. And so they now, with the bigger bags, was a safety concern. That was one of the reason for the bigger bags. It was a safety concern. That's why the bigger bags are. But with the <clears throat> the two pickoff thing is now going to have the stolen base be more of a thing. Mm -hmm. Which also is, you as a pitcher, you know, I don't have to throw over two times. I, I, and he's I still not going to steal because he's going to be thinking, I still have one more throw. He's not going to steal until I throw twice. So that kind of defeats that purpose of the of the rule change. Um, and then the time clock was just, I mean, he pretty much just said they're trying to speed games up because the time difference was like, the average was three hours and something, yeah. and it was just 220 was the, the game before. But how come like when the Red Sox play – the Royals, it's a two hour and 41 minute game. When the Red Sox play the Yankees, it's a three hour and 25 minute game. It's because every pitch counts. That's the biggest difference. Listen, there's I've, always I've, a guy on second base. But here's all right, we want to get to you, something exciting. Do you really care about the game side? Like, I'm talking I about do. the fan excited. The fan, if you're basing it off of like a. Well, if you're bored at three hours, like, don't get me wrong, baseball is the most boring game to watch on TV. <laughs> yeah. Could be. On TV. I, if I want to take a nap, I'm going to throw some baseball on. But, like, to be there, I'm not complaining about three hours. I just paid $150 for my ticket, if yeah. not more, and $75 to feed my family, and that's just maybe my so family. So you're getting to my point. Is why I want to be there as long as possible. Not start there. We changed the game before we changed how, how affordable is it to get to a game. 100%. I'm paying 18 bucks for a beer. When I can get a six pack or you know a, a twelve Whatever. pack for eighteen bucks and watch it at my house, yeah. but like if I, we're worried about the excitement of baseball, you're, you you want to cater one? to the fans. Oh yeah, make it a. I looked at spring training games for the Giants. Oof, good lord, they're, they're the most yeah. expensive organization to go hundred dollars for a ticket to spring and training. By the way, you cannot get terrible org. By the you way, you cannot get tickets. Like so, we have obviously I've, I've got some friends and connections and hey, can you get us tickets? Nope. They will not give out tickets. Dude, I had to pay had two a, years. a $25 fee yeah. through whatever service I did to get tickets to go. I'm just saying make Major League Baseball fucked with the game because the fans, I don't know who was bitching about the, the younger gen. I don't know. Like, But you're not making it more affordable to go. No. Like that hasn't changed. No. And like, you know, owners, like you're losing a half hour of sales and whatever food service throughout the stadium. So, 100%. You want to get excited about baseball? The most exciting play in baseball is with a guy on third base and you hit a fly ball to left field, right field, center field, and the guy catches it and throws it home. Then make them everybody, you have to tag up every play. If we're worried about the most exciting play in baseball, every if you go to a game, every time the guy catches it and throws it home, everybody goes, ooh, ah. They get all fired up because it's a play that could have been. Right. And if like, that's one of the rules, like if we're going to try to, you got to do certain things, you're going to make rule changes. If you got a guy on third base, nobody out, one out, you have to tag up. Like it would be, you would have speedsters running bases all the time. Right. But now they don't want to make that kind of rule because that's completely changing the way the game is played to where you have to do something. But now they want to change the way you change the way you're picking off the way you're getting signs. They want to change all these other small things we all talk about it in the dugouts, and, and we talked about it last year for sure, is the most exciting play in baseball is the non-play. The guy that you catch a ball with a guy on third base and then nobody tags because it's not an easy play to make. It's just like stealing a bag. Your percentages are not very good. Uh. But 
it's very, very exciting to watch a guy throw a baseball 285 feet on a line, especially when you got guys like Ichiro or Vladimir Guerrero Jr. In a lot of cases, and, those are to win a game senior, or I mean, tie the game or exactly. a big, big play. Like big to, the, to the pick thing. Like We need truck catchers and infielders I, again, too. I'm sorry, but if you can't. If, XL baseball or whatever. If so, well, just XFL, like it, yeah. Well, like yeah. it used to be. I mean, it was. Dude, like, if you can only pick over twice, I'm sorry, then the rule for the base runners, if you don't steal within those two picks. Then yeah. you can't if you picks over twice, then you, you can't, can't steal. steal. You can't yeah. steal after that. Like yeah. you got, you got, the, you got two picks to steal. To steal, but then again, you don't know when he's going to pick. That's the point of base. That's, that's the, the point of stealing bases. Exactly. That's yeah. what I'm saying. We're what are we going to do? Just give guys stolen yes, bases? Yes, that's now? what they're doing. No. Well, that, they like doesn't... it because the little, like the, you get to the younger. Pick twice youth, and watch the clock. It's all stolen bases. But you'll see it in, when CJ starts playing minors or whatever. When he's no, they can steal bases at seven. How are we? They can't even fucking throw the ball to the bag. Uh, th- so, and then I was going to ask this. Like, They're elite, though. It's an elite. <laughs> yeah, elite. Yeah. Don't even. Let's, that's a whole nother. We don't got we'll time go back that. for another episode on that one. That's funny shit. But I was thinking this with the clocks. This could be interesting with the pitch clock. Do you think that Velo will drop? Because guys don't have time to go, like, get set max effort. Do you think Velo might dip a little bit? Because guys are going to be in a more of a hurry to get the ball to the plate. I don't think so necessarily. And do you think like walks are going to come down? Oh. Like like they're going to be more efficient strike throwers? No, <laughs> I'm just walks asking. I'm just down. asking because it could be. I it, think it's going to get it could worse. Be, it could, that's what I was gonna, thinking. Gonna, it's going to be. You're going to throw pitches, and I did it. You're going to throw a lot of pitches that you didn't want to throw. Like I, all right, two two. I'm I'm trying to get to whatever pitch it is. I just got to say, and obviously we didn't use pitch com. I got to throw with whatever, whatever they're calling. They call a slider down and away. I just missed it for a ball. And, and so I think, I mean, at the end of the day, the hitters are going to be sad. You want to speed up the game? Open up the strike zone. Open, oh, I'm, open up the strike zone to whatever. And when we get to automatic strike zones, that's fun, by the way. I liked it. I like challenging strikes, but it didn't speed up the game. I did it and it'd take 45 that's the thing. seconds. Even, even I did it in the championship game. Even the time that you call the pitch clock, mm-hmm. you're wasting time. Oh, yeah. Rather than just let them pitch, for the umpire to call time and say, that's a ball, give him a ball. Yeah. You're walking around, it's been almost yeah. 20 you seconds. A, you got to point to the three people that are in charge. Yeah. they. The challenging of a pitch was really cool. I, I did like it. Um, I And I've seen it a little bit. The game of baseball, you go back to the coolest part about baseball is the human error is there. right? I don't necessarily want Angel Hernandez umpiring every game <laughs> yeah. behind, for me, but... When you got good umpires and you hold them accountable, like the guy that was 99% in the playoffs, that was unbelievable. Yeah. And you watch the game, and you're like, you didn't notice him. He wasn't there. What was a strike was a strike. What was a ball was a ball. And that's the coolest part. That umpire can make $5 million, and I'd be, pr- I'd be happy with it. But you get guys that aren't held accountable for their, for their job, that's when bad umpires happen. The, well, and they want to make it about them. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a show, and it's not a show. The, the show is actually – the battery, the thing that's going on, you know, challenging hitters, you know, and that was one of the things I'll never forget. Chris sale saying, I want, you guys want to talk about sticky stuff. You want to talk about all this other nonsense. How about I go out there with my bare hand and the baseball, you go out there with your bare hands and the bat and let's see who wins. That is a challenge. And he goes, I don't like, we don't want to get into any of the other nonsense. No, no stealing signs, no, whatever. Let's just make it about the challenge of pitcher versus the hitter. When we start doing that is when this game gets better. And the hitters got all sad and wanted all the other stuff. But that was sale. But, that, like, but it looks cool. It does look cool. All the, the seven elbow guards and whatever. All of it. It's. I mean, I guess we'll see. I don't know if, if velocity has been down at all throughout spring training. I'm just asking. Like, I don't think velocity will be up. You, what you, I'm worried about sp- is a guy in getting ready to throw and the umpire calls time they talked about. I think it was. Ben Verlander, the brother, mm-hmm. he says some pretty good content. He said somebody's going to get hurt. Oh, yeah. A pitcher's going to get hurt because he's going to have to stop mid-pitch because the umpire says time, and somebody's going to hurt themselves with their leg or they're going to throw when they shouldn't. Or- and, and I just think it should be more of a, a umpire discretion. Like, hey, if we – like, this is – it's like the – in my opinion, it's like the speed limit. The speed limit's 65, and you're going 68, 70, 72. Like, we're not going to give you a ticket. Yeah. But – if you're going 75, 80, 85, 
you're going to get a warning if you're going 100. Like you're when the clock goes zero, give it, a, it. Give it a good 1,000. Like you said, they do it in football. It hits zeros, and sometimes you'll see oh, yeah. that 1,001 yeah. 1, snap, and they don't call it. It's, it's umpire's discretion, and that's where I think if the guy's starting their windup or they're, you know, obviously you know that they're shaking. You can see that they're shaking. But if they're set. Yeah. He's coming with the ball at some point. It's not gonna he's not gonna come set for ten seconds. But what you're gonna see is in the minor leagues, it was once I touch the dirt is when the clock started. And so you're gonna find out guys just don't get on the dirt until they figure some stuff out. Like if you gotta take a breath or you're getting a foul ball, like I would just walk around the dirt. All right, this is what I'm doing. This is how I like you gotta play the game in your head. It's a chess match. It's not we're not playing checkers out here. It's there's a real thought process of what's going on. I'm not just up here. Some of the young kids are just up there ripping heaters, middle, middle, and hoping for the best. You gotta, you gotta have a thought process of what's going on, and so that's where I got, I got into the habit of, you know, if I gotta wipe my cleats off to think, give myself two or three seconds, I'll do it. You go cover first base, and that's where the foul ball down the first base line, and you're running over to first, and you're taking six, seven hard steps. Your heart rate is going a little bit. How do you, how do you slow that down in the 19 seconds they give you? to throw your next pitch or to think about what's going on. That's where I, all of my, I, I think four of my five delay of games were off after foul balls. So the hitter is engaged. The hitter is locked in on what I'm throwing. How am I going to deter that? How am I going to set up the next pitch? Again, in a 2-2, two, 3-2 two, two count has been all of them also. So it's not like I'm delaying this game. The foul ball is to delay a game. Like that's where... You're engaged. There's a thought process. How this guy was on my stuff. How do I get that to be an out? How do I get him to roll it over? How do I get a punch out? I got to look at the other side of the plate. I got to look at what did he, why did he foul that ball off? So that's where I kind of got mad personally that I also think it's all off the person starting the clock too. It's all a human error. Like, oh, this guy, okay, we'll start it now. Like what? There's a difference between. Can you challenge if you didn't start right? it on time? And I yelled at the umpire on one of them. I said, I, dude, I came. Before I got the ball, I looked at the clock. It was at 10. I go, that's, is that not on the hitter or is that my fault? You know, so that's where, where, where the clock is. Who's starting the clock? Is it when they touch the dirt? Is it when they get the ball? Is it when the umpire, when the catcher throws it? We had some guys that were lobbing the baseball to give us an extra second. So, like, there's always ways around the rule, you know, j- straddling the fence on what, what the rule is. And you're going to find out guys are getting used to it. Um, what I did like is that I have seen a lot of veteran pitchers pitching earlier in spring training to kind of get used to it. Um, you don't really see a lot of the veteran pitchers pitching the first three or four games, and they've all thrown for the most part. The ones that I've seen, um, a lot of them have thrown. As usually they wait about eight, ten games in, and then they usually don't pitch until March 1st, March 2nd, and a lot of them have already thrown. So that's the one thing I do like about on the spring training side and, and watching some of these veterans pitch. Well, we'll see. We'll see when it comes down to the season how much quicker the games are, how the rules take effect. Uh, again, I'm excited. Not excited, but... Intrigued. The sh- the shift one, too. Like, again, I, we mentioned it here. Like, you, you, it's not an excuse anymore. You can't use the shift as the reason you hit 200. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're still going to shift. They'll figure it out. Because the shortstop and second baseman can go all the way up the middle, all the way to second base. Correct. They don't. They just can't go on the other side. Right. So they're still going to take the middle way. You can even bring the right fielder and play shallow left. That's right. I saw. I so I, I so, mentioned that because I saw they, the shift is just infield. Correct. They haven't said anything about the outfield. And that's what I was. I think I, me and you were talking about. Yeah, it. And that's and what I said. I, I watched it. I bring mean, a left a, fielder over and play where the second baseman was playing. Yeah. Normally. You play that short. You play that short. And I right saw. Field. I saw a diagram of a coach that actually wrote that. It was a minor yeah. league guy. And I was like, you're going to see something odd like that. I mean, but I mean, they were even doing shifts on JD Martinez and Mitch Moreland when I was there in 19 of having four outfielders. Nobody on, nobody out. They were leading off the inning. We were running four outfielders. The other team was running four outfielders, right? Because they knew it was either going to be on the pull side, ground ball, or in the air. And they couldn't give up that left center gap or the right center gap, whatever, who was hitting, right? So, I mean, I watched it multiple times. I've seen it with Joey Gallo. We played four outfielders. And not count, not moving the second baseman back, just literally playing four outfielders. So any fly ball is an out. So that's, I mean, they're going to take that away. There, there's a lot of things that they are taking away. But it also opens up, if I'm facing you and you're left-handed, and I think we got a pull side shift on, it takes away the outside part of the plate for me. I can't just throw sinkers away. I can't throw a backdoor cutter. Everything's got to be in. right? They can tell me, oh, just pitch normal. No. 
right? Now, I leave a sinker middle down. Yeah, you're going to pull it. But if I throw it away, you should be able to hit the ball the other way. That's well, that's the other pay. thing. I forgot to mention the ex Avilo thing. He said that uh, my buddy was talking to Rajay and said, why don't these guys just bunt and take the whatever? Oh, yeah. They won't do that because it will bring their exit velocity average down, and that is how guys are getting contracts now. Oh, above 95, you get paid. So it's like, and we, I, my argument was, well, if I'm hitting 300, am I not going to get paid? Am I going to get paid if I'm hitting 300? Yeah. Or am I going to hit 180 with great exit below and get one year for 11 mil? Well, I'd probably get a multiple year deal if I'm hitting 300. Yeah. That's where that doesn't make sense to me. Right. And I told, I was telling Chad, find me a 300 hitter for a career that didn't have a, have a long career or uh, get paid a long, long career. If you're hitting yeah. 300. You're going to stick around. Yes. That, you know, and you may, you may not have the highest exit velo, but so I don't know. Hitter. What's the you're hitting you're on base. Right. On base percentage and, and scoring runs for your We've team. talked about it, man. You've seen a lot of hard hit ball, high exit velo. They're, they could be outs too. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of them. Doesn't There's mean you can hit, you know. I don't know. Obviously, you can't hit. Joey Gallo freaking sucks. We, uh, we see what the, the big leagues has in store for us. All the rule changes. You, what you got going on. Mm-hmm. Again, if you want to get involved with Marcus, reach out to him on social media, DIB's website. Uh, what is the, yeah, what the is, Instagram, Instagram DIB baseball okay. Academy and or my Instagram. That's probably the only two ways, I guess. But if you want to get involved and uh, have more through us and then yeah, we can yeah, talk yeah, we to can him if read, we can give his number course. out. Yeah, we could always do it that way, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, the dogs are on the road this weekend at San Jose State uh, back at home next week for a midweek game against UOP and at home against Nevada. So go out and check out the dogs uh, five and three right now and uh, excited to see them continue to go and uh, get some more wins. A lot of high school baseball. A lot of week. high school baseball. A lot of high school baseball. Uh, Co Classic. You've got the Central Tournament. And wherever you are in your areas, again, don't don't you know? Reach out again. Sacramento has been awesome to us in Elk Grove area in Roseville. Like, shoot us the shoot us the the stuff going on down in that area. Uh, you know, uh, again, we appreciate all your support. And uh, Marcus, again, thank you, brother. Thank you, boys. Always appreciate, appreciate it. it. Uh, this is another episode of Hit or Die Podcast. Hit or Die.